Amen. Amen. Uh, let's put our two hands up. Praise the Lord. I'm so grateful tonight. Not only that I'm preaching in my friend's church, but I, that I am also with my wife. I want to have to greet her husband. Then we'll hear the word. Na mengi tusaongea kibaraka. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father we thank you. Baba tukushukuru. We bless you. Tukubariki. We have an opportunity tunakunsa to stand on this altar. Tusimama kwa madaba hayo. We take it not for granted. Bana tuchukui kwa hapa I raise up our voice. Lakini tuaibua sauti zetu. And I say Lord we love you. Na tunasema Bwana tukubariki. And Lord thank you. Na Bwana ni asante. Now Father use this altar. Sasa Bwana tumia madaba hayo. Which you have given to your servant. Na Bwana that as I speak by this altar, let your people be blessed. Let your people be lifted. Let your people be healed. Let your people be delivered. I give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love this song. I'm not going to sing, but I love it. Praise the Lord. Amen. With me, let us praise His name together. So we are magnifying the name of the Lord tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you happy we are speaking to you? Or you are wondering what are these people saying from Yamira? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you have learned a lot from my friend. I know he's a man of God. I know he's a teacher of the world. And I know he's a blessed man. And I want to speak now about sacrifice. Sacrifice. We talked about it yesterday. We talked about it on Wednesday. I'm again speaking on it in the same day and tonight. Let's turn to the book of Exodus together, please. And then we'll come back to the book of Philippians. Exodus chapter number 8. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter number 8. We are perfecting that which is dead. We are perfecting these altars and the teachings on altars because by true altars lives are changed, ministries are changed, people are changed. And so we teach on something that brings change the lives of people. First number 25 and 26 of Exodus 8. The word of the Lord says that the Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not right to do so, for we, we will be sacrificing the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God, if we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptian before their eyes, then they will not. They, they, then will will they not stone us? Farao akawaita Musa na Haroni akawambia edeni mkatole mungwe mdabihu dami ya iti hii Musa akasema haitupasi kufanya hivyo bakuwa tutachitia sadaka wana mungu wetu na haya matukizo ya wamisri je tutachitia sadaka ya haya matukizo ya wamisri mbele ya macho yao wasitupige kwa mawe Praise the Lord Amen You know 
many people believe that they can do their prayers anywhere. They can do their, their praises anywhere. And they can give their offerings anywhere. And they enjoy the blessings of God. That's why the majority of you, you can stop giving to your pastor's program on TV and they give it to maybe somebody else in, on TV because you think by him you are going to receive blessings. I have come to tell you today in the name of the Lord that you are sacrificing abnomination 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 and when you sacrifice abnomination you make your life desolate you make your life a wilderness you make your life unproductive you make your life unfruitful it is not right to do it anywhere it is only right for you to do it where God has chosen Praise the Lord. Amen. As we talk about sacrifice, there are a few things I want to say. If you want to become a productive life and not be a Westland, and not be an unyugurate land or life and productive and profitable, then you need to understand that you must have an altar from where you serve the Lord, from you where you serve it, you are alive in the Lord. And the God is asking the church, as he did in his own days, he is asking us again in this our time that we identify the place of prayer Sacrifice. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, it is a high time you honor God. It is a high time you worship and glorify God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a glad offering. Praise the Lord. Amen. I take you back now to Matthew so that I can teach you a very profound principle on worshiping God. Matthew chapter number 5. The Bible says, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the, to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother has all against you, against you, Basi, ukileta sadaka yako badabahuni, na huku ukikumbuka, ya kuwa nungu yako, ananeno tu yako. Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way for first be consigned to you to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Iyache sadaka yako, bele ya badabahuni, Uwele zako, ukapate kwaza, ukapatane kwaza na nungu yako, kisha urudi uitoe sadaka yako. Keep and agree with thy anniversary quickly, while thou art in the way with him, rest at any time, the anniversary deliver thee to the church, and the church deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Patana na mstaki wako upesi. Yule mstaki asiti aga kupeleka kwa kati. Na ye kati aga kupeleka kwa askari. Ukatupu wa gerezani. The Lord, our God, wana mungu wetu, expects each and every one of us for the altar. Kuonekana kwa malabaru. Every believer must appear before the altar. Hazima ato gerezani. And I want to say it again. Nataka kurudia te. Everyone who believes in the Lord Jesus must in one time or another every week appear before the Lord. And the best time and the best way to appear before the Lord 
should be a daily practice. Daily practice. In other words, we are saying those that believe every day they must come before the altar. Come in the morning. Come in the evening. And give their gift to God. You know, when I'm talking about gift, that's why I began it very far. By telling you the first sacrifice you give to God is your body. Then the second sacrifice you give to God is the praise, the gift of your lips. Receive Praise the Lord. Amen. Then the other one is prayer. Then the other one is fasting. Then these other things follow. And I'm going to show you how they follow. Because I have today only to stick to teach about altars. Sunday I'll teach something else. Because why am I speaking about altars? Because Altars are the most ignored ministry in the church. And the altars are the areas where our lives are dead to the work of God. Because we don't perform it on a daily basis. If you look in the book of Daniel, chapter number 8, you read the verses number 2, it will teach you about giving sacrifice. How the, the, the king of Babylon managed to take away the sacrifice of the children of God from the altar. And how he made the land of Israel to be desolate, to be a wilderness, to be barren, to be unproductive, to be unprofitable. Because God came out of the land, which was the land of the promise. If you read also in Daniel chapter 11, Ten of you, you like to say the last part of Daniel 11, 32. But you don't know under what experience that that one was spoken. It is said, those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with the fratary. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Please take it back one other scripture, verse number 31. The Bible says, let's go to that camp to that one. That it then that one. So that it's full. For ships from Cyprus shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved. And return in range against the holy covenant. And do damage. So he shall return and so regard to those who forsake the holy covenant. The holy covenant that he's talking about is the covenant of serving God day in, day out in the morning and the evening with prayer and the sacrifice first number that you want to say and the forces shall be mastered by him and they shall defile the sanctuary fortresses the, the sanctuary fortress then they shall take away the daily sacrifices and the blessed there the abomination of desolation is like a desert no food can grow there people can stay there but under difficulties 
ya hukumu. Then verse number 1 it says. Alafu sasa taratibu hapo ndio unasema. Those who do wickedly against the covenant wale wanao baya kinyume na agano. He shall corrupt with his flattery. Atawachafua na uongo. But the people who know their God. Lakini watu wajua Mungu shall be strong. Watakuwa na and they carry out great exploits. Watafanya mambo makubwa. Say with me. I shall carry out. I shall carry out great exploits. Great exploits. Great exploits. Great exploits in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are only able to to carry out exploits. Kupata milipuko when you are not defiling. Wakati hautafui the house of the Lord. Nyumba ya Bwana. The altar of worship. When you are able to bring unto the Lord not the, not the sacrifices of abomination, but the sacrifices of honor, sacrifice of glory that the Lord has commanded in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father thank you. Baba ni asante. How our lives. How our lives. We have been called to make one by God. Na Mungu so that we can show the world. It was necessary we are the call. Ya kama sisi na we are winning team. Sisi ndio tunashinda. We are the call. Sisi na Mungu. We are the people that do exploits. You must have a name. You can do exploits. Until you begin to honor God. Until you begin to flow with God. Until you begin to see God in everything you do. It is important for the church to live for God. To serve God. And to offer at the altar. The sacrifice. The sacrifice that the Lord has required in the name of Jesus. So Matthew, Jesus is speaking and he is telling the followers of the disciples who are following after him and the all Israel with him and he says if you come to this place and you begin to hold, you want to offer your sacrifice and the one That you will have an issue with a brother. Don't take away the old the sacrifice. Leave the sacrifice at the altar. God knows that once the sacrifice is at the altar, it doesn't leave the altar. It is the giver of the sacrifice that leaves the altar to make things right and come back to do the sacrifice. A great number of us when we were to we are offering sacrifices to God which are defined by our lifestyles Hallelujah Oh, pastor, from Yamira, you have become hard on us. No, I'm helping you to go to hell. I want to see you in hell. I want to rejoice with you in hell. I want to worship the Lord with you in hell. In the name of Jesus. And so, I make it easy for you to go to hell. The way up is not easy. I can't preach and get sweat like this. If it were nothing, it would be unprofitable for me. And Paul says, in 1 Corinthians 15, he says, If there is no resurrection, then our faith is in faith. And I want to say to you today, in going to heaven, it's not by the way of righteousness. Then I don't see why I can preach the gospel. Hallelujah. 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 So, 
Matthew is writing. And they is saying what Jesus has. He's writing what Jesus has to say. And he says, brothers. I beseech you. I ask you. That when you bring your gifts. At the altar of our God. And there you remember. That you have an issue with a brother. I begin with sinners. That you are seeing us, you are very good. And you are bad in what you decide. But do you know? I think that you are. Before the pastor comes, have them to get the artist to help a heart who to say dear, know the truth. Who do our well? You have already taken us into His presence. And the choir members. Now on the choir, they have other choir members. Who they have issues with in the choir. They have issues which they go about each other. And then they come to offer a sacrifice of praise. I come to tell you, you are an offering to God and up nomination. Now, Sasa, here is the singer. And they sing to God. And from the house, there's an issue. And he's making every one of us to enter into that development as we follow together in giving that sacrifice. And the God says, before you do that sacrifice, come out of the altar. In other words, he saying, repent before you sing. Repent before you praise. Repent before you tell us to worship him. One man said, the, the worst sin that most Christians do Many times they do it when they are doing praise and worship. Especially when they are singing songs like Oh to Jesus I surrender Oh to Him I free That you have surrendered all. Are you sure? And you are making us also to enter into a self mistake at the altar. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the Bible says that when you come here, one of the things you have to do is to release them. Reconcile yourself with them and God. Now then flow. Flow in the spirit. Flow in power. Flow in praise. Flow in his presence. He desires us to flow. And for us to flow, the disconnections must be levelly moved. I believe there are people who know about the mechanism of our, of our car. There are things they call um, connections. Praise the Lord. Now, those connections, if they disconnect, especially with these automatic cars, you cannot drive. A small thing can frustrate your life. And I want to say, in the way to heaven, a small thing can disconnect you from the way, can let you be an enemy with your God. And what are these small things? Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. One, 
one of these few weeks I was preaching about forgiveness on the way of freedom of ministry. And I've learned a lot of things as a minister. There are people who are so good who God would want to use and take them very far. Bad. But a great number of them, they are living in unforgiveness. And so they can't go very far. No God wants them to go very far. They are not going very far. Either they, are, they, they have an issue with their parents, they have issues with their family members, or they, are, they have issues with the other brothers in the church. And they want to go to heaven. I have come to tell you, Jesus said in verse number 15 <laughs> about the Lord's prayer. Lord's prayer. Verse number 15. Unless you forgive those who have wronged you, make that with your father in heaven. Forgive your sins. So if your sins are retained and they are not forgiven, which heaven are you going? Let me say, what are you saying? Here in heaven, you are heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't want to end at the grave. I want to go beyond the grave. I want to be with my Father. In the name of Jesus. I want to enjoy the blessings of God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you with me? One of the things that people don't want to do everywhere in our churches today they don't want to sacrifice. A great number of people don't want to sacrifice. They want to live a life of easy not sacrifice but easy life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've, go, I've come to tell you going to heaven is not easy. Jesus says in Luke 14 that we should carry our clothes and follow him. He says, in any man who wants to follow me, let him carry his clothes follow me. Luke 14, 26 and 27. Then he says how we should cut that close. Praise the Lord. It's not easy. It's not easy. The Bible says if everyone comes to me and does not hate his father and a mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and in his own life, he cannot be my disciple. How do you hate yourself? How do you hate your father and mother? Priority. What are the things you give priority? I said here, he a man came, uh, Jesus told a man, yes, come and follow me. And the man said, my father is lying down there. Allow me to go and bury him today. And after the burial, I come and follow you. Then Jesus said to him, let the dead bury the dead. But as for you, come and follow me. Lord, I leave my dead father lying down. I come to follow you. Can people not say that I never loved my father? He says, if anyone come after me, let him hate his father and mother. 
Baba yake na mama yake. Why is he beginning with the father and mother? Pamoja na hata na baba na mama. They took care of you while you were when you were crying. Wakati ulikuwa unalia. When you were dirty they washed you. Wakati ulikuwa uchafu alikuwa. They took you to school. Wakati ulipeleka school. They, they, they did all all things. Wali. Fanya mambo yote kwako. And yet God is saying, na baba Mungu anasema, between me and them, kati yako na wao, I come first. Naja kwanza. Praise the Lord. Amen. So priority is God. The other things are additions. Are we together? And therefore, if we are going to enjoy the blessings of God, guide the doors. And whoever does not bear his cross, and come after me, and cannot be my disciple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is a hard saying, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another time he says, unless you eat my flesh, and drink my blood, you will never be my disciple. How can they say? How can this man feel that has his body? How can he feel that? He says, if anyone does not drink in my blood, and eat my flesh, he is not none of me, none of my company. Hallelujah. And so many people left. And when they left, he looked at his uh, disciples who to be are you also going? They say, Lord, to whom shall we go? It is you who has the word of truth. So you are following him who has the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, let's, let's come back now to sacrifice again. In John chapter number 12, we read about Jesus in the house of Martha and Mary and their brother Lazarus. In verse number 3, we see Mary as it was her usual way of behaving, wrecking the ultimate bottle. Akifuja ile tupa ya manukato. I'm taking it and pouring it on Jesus. Akitukua na kuimwagia Yesu. And it was very expensive. Na ilikuwa ya pesa mingi. And every other race, they have no noses. Na kila moja kainua mapua. If there's an English like that, noses. Mapua. Praise the Lord. They nice have their nose. Wakainua mapua. They smell this. Sweet fragrance. The sweet aroma. And then Judah said, Why the West? They should have sold this, this oil. And the man is with the poor. Jesus looked and said, The poor you have always. But me, Lakini me, you don't have me always. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, even if you dispute the poor, you give one side of uh, Kangemi today, and you realize the other side is even much more poor. Because poverty is a spirit, and it's not dealt with by giving a handout. It is dealt with by releasing the truth. If you give the truth to the poor people, the poor people will become rich. If you deny them the truth and they give them a handout, after you get it, you get it. 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 You Iyo wanaita nini? Sangwe na mitani. Praise the Lord. Amen. Utapata hiyo. Utaipata. Nagini na juu waka wenyewe. Nitaruni kwa wenyewe. Because it is you. Kwa sababu na niyako. There is a power. Kuna kubu. That it repairs. Ambari na kata. The things which God wants to do in your life. Mako wabaya kukwa rataka kufaka maishani mwaka. 
Hallelujah. It's not education. Education is good. But it is God. The Bible says, remember, it is God who gives you the power to make wealth. And he never says, remember, it is your hard work that makes you rich. Remember, it is your education that makes you rich. I have always asked myself, when Abraham died, he was the richest man in the East. But when you look at the life of Isaac, who received all the wealth until he started to operate in the covenant of his father. He had nothing. It is not until first chapter number 26 when we begin to see God blessing Isaac. And they make room for him. And they blesses him by the covenant of his father. Let me tell you. You can receive millions. You can receive billions. And they yet become poor. I was so surprised the other day when I was watching TV and I saw one of the great men who used to walk with great men. He walked with the boy, he walked with Saitoni, he walked with the other people. And when he was sick the other day, he cannot buy even drugs of 5,000. With the kind of people you walked with, and you can't manage to buy 5,000 drugs. Poverty is with us. Now, praise the Lord. Amen. Mary gives her sacrifice the best of her life. She gives her oil very expensive. If this oil will be sold, and the money is given to the poor and the poor can have enough to enjoy the that must have been very expensive and the others who were incensed by it they became very angry with her and they said what is this nonsense what have you done let me tell you if you come here every morning and you shout and you are praying now, there are people who will speak against you. Not everybody will enjoy your friends. If you come here every evening and you are praying to Yahweh, you are calling on his name, others will call you names. Because you are doing something contrary to their way of thinking. Their listening is not in that direction. So Mary was rebuked. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Leave her alone. And they say, Whenever the gospel is preached, she shall be remembered for that action. Today we are measuring her for her good action. What can you be remembered for? As a believer in the kingdom of heaven. What shall people remember you for? Was how you are gossiping? Can people remember you for gossiping? Can people remember you for murmuring? Can people remember you for complaining? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What can you be remembered for? Mary is being remembered by sacrificing for the Lord. Now, there's a man called Solomon. This man was a lover of God as a dispute. Praise the Lord. And because of his love for God, he gave a sacrifice of a thousand bulls. There are Kenyans who can give more than a thousand bulls, but they never give to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when he gave, the Bible says, 
Then God as Mungu visited him by night and they say na akasema ask me anything you want me yote chochote utakacho if god can ask me that today kama mungu angeuliza hilo leo i'll ask god for nairobi nitamwambia mungu ni god everyone who is in nairobi kila mmoja aliye nairobi give that one as my member nipe awe kushiriki everybody in nairobi kila mtu nairobi i want them for my member nataka wao washiriki i'm not ask for a hairbrush Sitauliza ndege zile. I'm not asking for the highest building in Nairobi. Nauliza ile jengo kubwa sana Nairobi. I'll ask God, nitamwomba Mungu to give me all the souls. Anipe nafsi zote of Nairobi for the kingdom. Za Nairobi sio za ufalme. Because if you get all Nairobi for the kingdom, sawa ukipata Nairobi yote kwa ufalme, you will gain much more. Utapata zaidi than you get in an airplane. Ushinda kupata ndege. He said, ask me. Ana sema ni and Solomon said, "Na Solomon yakasema, Lord, Bwana, give me wisdom, nipe hekima to read your people. Your God tell to us." And God looked at him and he said, "Bwana, kama mtasema you ask only for wisdom. Nauliza hekima to read you also ask for your enemies. Sipia ungeni yote. Would you ask for wealth? Sipia ungeni yote. Would you ask for long life? Ungeni uliza pia maisha. You ask only for wisdom. Naomba tu hekima. He said, "God, wisdom hekima to be the best king iwe pa kutiliwe kwa people watu wako to rule over your people tawala kila watu wako and the god say na mungu anasema i give you wisdom nakupa hekima but on top of wisdom i give you for what you did not ask nakupa hata kila ukuomba i want to tell you today nataka kukwambia leo there are things when you come before the lord and do those things the lord will cause your life Hallelujah hallelujah chapter 3 verse number 4 and 5 He said to God akasema Bwana give me wisdom nipe hekima and God Bwana give me wisdom and hekima Praise the Lord Amen you can see what what a uh, sacrifice can do it opens the heart of God and the God is excited with you and the God says oh I can see you are doing something for me now what do you want me to do for you don't just say and my God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that which you think or even imagine according to his power that works in me God cannot do it there's power in you every one of us is born of God there's power in you but God cannot do exceedingly abundantly above all that which you think or even imagine until you please him you must be pleased him you must be a pleaser of God when you please God he has no option but to give you anything don't ask God for a good husband when you are not pleasing him oh God I want a man who prays and you never pray sio niliwambia jana niliwambia kwamba nilikuja kwako mara ya kwanza nikuuliza ni kuoe nikakwambia uombe au kuomba praise the lord amen asi tunatembeana kwa nuru na hiyo ni nuru tu sio ingine ya kusengenyana lakini the second time niliporudi nikamwambia hao kuomba sasa homa aliomba na akanichibu. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, sasa when it is about God, kati ni kuhusu Mungu, so that he can do something for you. Ili akupatie kitu, you must first of all praise him. Lazima kwanza umpendeze. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to teach tomorrow about uh, the, the day after tomorrow about good works. Nitafundisha 
siku baada ya kesho kuhusu kazi and when i teach you about good works na nikuafundisha kuhusu mambo i'll show you how your good works will connect with god nitakuonyesha jinsi kazi zako zinachangia your life totally na ibadilishe maisha yako so please don't learn to miss on sunday haiwe tafadhali usikose jumapili don't learn to miss on sunday usikose jumapili tell your neighbor neighbor i beg you by the mercies of god don't miss on sunday usikose jumapili hata kama ulikuwa umeplani kumiss kama ulikuwa umepaka don't miss usikose haleluya haleluya praise the lord amen and then i give you the last example of an evil man alafu ni wapi pana kwa mwisho wa mtu aliyekuwa who gave sacrifice alitoa dhabihu in second kings katika upande wa chapter number 3 namba wa 3 the bible talks about the king of moab biblia inaangalia kuhusu upande wa moab this man huyo mtu was faced with a very hard time alipitia wakati mgumu they went to war with israel alienda katika vita and the when they went to war with israel kana piga la israeli verses number 20 20 please let let's look at verse number 26 26 why did that sit up hallelujah hallelujah and the when the king of moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him He took with him 700 men who drew swords to break through to the king of Edom but they could not. Naye pande wa Moab alipoona ya kwamba ameshindwa vitani alikuwa pamoja naye watu 700 wenye kukuta panga ili wapende hata kwa mfalme wa Edom wala hawakudiriki. Then he took with him the son who would have reigned in his place and offered him as a sacrifice as a burnt offering unto the wall and there was great indignation against Israel so they departed from him and returned to their own land Dipo akatoa mwanawe wa kwanza yeye ambaye angetawala mahali pake akatoa awe sadaka ya kuteketezwa juu ya ukuta tukawa hasira kuu juu ya Israeli basi wakatoka kwake wakarudi kwenda nchi yao wenyewe I went to preach in Zambia and when i was preaching in zambia i met a zambian woman beautiful lady mrembo who has come to the kingdom and she confronted me she said pastor mtukati when i was in the dark world i saw power niliona nguvu This woman had done everything anyone wicked can do. Huyu mama alikuwa amefanya chochote mtu mbaya. She was as wicked as Jezebel herself. But she came to the Lord. Lakini akaja kwa Bwana. And she said, na akasema, since I got born again, hapo niliokoka, it doesn't work. I tell the cause. The power that you people talk about. Tukwa baki mnaongea. I never see it. Huwa siyo. Then I asked her. Alafu nikamuuliza, in that kingdom katika wao ufalme what did you do nini ulifanya to gain the power kupata nguvu number one kitu cha kwanza she told me akaniambia i gave my liver nilitoa maini yangu no i gave my kidney nilitoa kidney yangu so amen to the devil kwa shetani i did a lot of sacrifice nilifanya dhabihu nyingi sana to the devil kwa shetani and i got power and nikapata nguvu then i asked her how and i told her since you came to jesus hapo nikuja kwa yesu What have you done to receive power? Umefanya nini kupokea nguvu? You know. Yeah, I asked her how, how is your offering like? Je, kataka zako ziko vipi? She said I did like everybody else. Akasema natoa tu kama mwingine. Then I told her, alafu nikamwambia, in the kingdom of darkness, there were men and women who give anything they want to give. And they never walk in power. The only power they had was either power of immorality, all power of uh, of alcoholism, all power of drugs, but they had no power to enjoy their life, to enjoy finances, to enjoy good health, to enjoy their home and marriage, 
thou. But as for you, when you went ahead and they gave you a kidney, you had power. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, the king of Moab realized that life was threatening in him, uh, on him and not only him all the kingdom of Moab was under threat and then he decided to give his son the son the wicked kingdom they know how to play for power the kingdom of God do not understand how to play with power hallelujah Amen. hard stuff and uh, I, I know many of you you are saying now what is this is talking about I am talking about the kingdom every kingdom has priesthoods and the priesthood of the kingdom of heaven is that the one God wanted to save your life he gave his best it was possible for God even to over Satan as a sacrifice and they glory you Satan because Satan not defeat the penalty of your sin he could have given angels but angels could not defeat but just you in the kingdom of heaven he could have given animals because the Bible says a thousand come or a thousand hills they belong to our God so God will have taken come and give them as a, a sacrifice and buy you from the heart of Satan but he was not good enough because you are princes before the eyes of God you are men in the image and the likeness of God and so God was salvaging his image and rightness and for him to do it he gave Jesus he gave Jesus he gave Jesus and when he gave Jesus he bought you with a praise price that nobody can pay he gave God to buy humanity he gave divinity to buy nature natural things and today you are a child of God going to heaven because of what God has done not because of what you have done but because of what he has done and for you to attain the things that you desire to have in life there is a price to pay a price to pay and you have to pay it for you to see how I pray in the name of the Lord that God will refill this to you and that you will do it and see the goodness of the Lord the last scripture 2nd Samuel 24 hallelujah a plague has come and people are dying and David is in distress he does not understand what to do then he goes to the house of God he goes before the priest and the priest seeks God and God says for this place to stop go back and then go to Awana's place. Get Awana's dressing floor. Raise an altar for me. Sacrifice for me. And this, and this play will stop. Hallelujah. 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 Second Samuel 24, 21 to 25. Samuel praise the Lord Amen. and David comes and his countenance is so bad his face his face is not good he is not smiling 
He's not enjoying anything. Don't be disturbed from within. He does, he does not know how he's going to be with Arwana. And he comes to a compound of Arwana. And when he comes to the compound, then Arwana sees the king with the soldiers with him. Let me ask you. If our president today decided to feast you with all his protocol, how will you feel? Once a house a media come to pray that he said, Abuja. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then it's when he was coming to Awana's home, and Awana would not know how to behave. He says, Oh king, live forever. What has brought the king to my compound? Is, is he coming peacefully? And the king says peacefully. That he says I have come. That you may give me your blessing from. For sacrifice. Awana says, I give you the dressing floor. I also give you the bull. I give you also firewood by giving you the yacht. And everything is free, okay? I don't care the host. You are not going to pay me. By you coming to my compound, it's a big price. Everybody knows the king has come to my home. The king has come to my compound. You take those things and do whatever you want. And the king says, no, it is not like so. I will not give God what is yours. I will give God what costs me. And the many believers, they want to give to God. What does it cost them? Let me ask you, that which you give to God, how does it cost you? If you look at the offerings in many places, people come with the the the, the, the notes maybe a fifty. What are you doing? Nandani yake ni kuchamano na receipt ya supermarket. Nandani yake ni kuchamano na hiyo ni kushua kwa supermarket. Kwa sababu na lete change. Kwa sababu na lete mazaliyo. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh God. Help us. Help us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our time is up. I don't know what to do. But I say this one thing. You are blessed of God. Think how to serve God. Raise up your standard. Change the things you've been doing. And as you change, let God change your life. Let God change your station. Let God change your place of life and living. Let God change the way you handle. The things of this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How I pray that our God will lift you up and make you a person when others look. They look at you. They look back where you are coming from. And they say, No. They look back where you are coming from. And they say, No. We don't know about this one. Something has happened. Maybe it's not the one. But you'll be the one. You'll be a surprise to those that knew you. You'll be a surprise to those that have been seeing you and those that have been sharing you. Because our God has beautified you. Our God has made you great. And the great is His works. Wonderful are his acts. May the Lord do it in your life. May the Lord cause you this time to enjoy the blessings of God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. When we are praying, I want you to put for us. Philippians 2 8. 
Because that's where we are going to pray from tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Philippians 2 8. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself. And he became obedient to the point of death. Even the death of the cross. Jesus. Yes. Though you are in appearance like God. And you are God. You came down and accepted the, the body of a man you humble yourself so that you can lift me up I pray today in the name of Jesus lift us up lift up our lives lift up our lives in the name of Jesus raise up your voice and pray now I say raise up your voice and pray to God From nothing to somebody. From nothing to somebody. Let me hear you pray. Let me hear you pray. In the name of Jesus. Transform your life. Change your life. By this word. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings. I bless you. I offer this day all that I am to you, Lord. For the exchange, oh Lord, of all that you have. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I give you glory, Lord. I give you glory, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. I'm back here. I'm back here. For my beer.